Next talk is on needle guidance. This is, this is straightforward. This is, the, the last talk is, is the meat and potatoes of, of what I have to tell you for the most part today. Um, everything else, if you know, if you know the last talk, um, everything else kind of falls in line. Um, needle guidance in much the same way. There, there are a few particulars about this. This is not a long presentation. I think I'll, I'll probably be a little quicker than I would have been. The things I want to talk to you about, the pros and cons, I want to talk to you about material management and a few pearls that kind of I learned along the way. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go through um, injection of every joint. It would, be, it would take me probably two straight days to go through that. Um, so rather than do that, I want to give you general approaches, and then, and then you guys can take it from there. And we're going to have some hands-on um, time later to actually practice, to practice this. The pros of ultrasound guidance of injection accuracy, there's no doubt that ultrasound does improve accuracy. Um, it improves your localization of target structures. And one of the major pros, at least in my practice, especially when I'm taking care of um, those that have been um, radiated in the past um, for, for whatever reason, um, for cancer, or if they can't receive um, radiation because they're pregnant, um, there is no radiation with this. It's a major pro of using ultrasound for needle guidance when you need to use needle guidance. Potentially, there may be some decreased complications with um, ultrasound needle guidance. You're able to avoid neurovascular structures, and we know that sticking a needle in the target structure and not the neuro neurovascular structure um, is the thing that you want to do. Um, and then it also improves patient satisfaction. We know this um, through our patient satisfaction surveys. Um, cons, it is, there is a major user dependence on this. Um, there is a learning curve which is um, somewhat protracted um, and, and can last um, can last some time before um, confidence and competence is, is high enough. Um, anatomic knowledge, so a baseline of anatomic knowledge um, uh, for musculoskeletal purposes for what you need for examination is not enough to know for ultrasound. So um, there is an anatomic knowledge acquisition which needs to occur with ultrasound um, and that does take time as well uh, because you're seeing structures underneath your um, field of view which um, you may not have considered in the past. You know, for instance, um, the um, uh, hook ligament around, uh, as an extension of the subscapularis tendon around the biceps. And it's not something that we think about every day, but you're going to see it when you scan the shoulder. So when you scan it and you can recognize it, you know that it's there or not, um, especially before you do an injection. Um, efficacy. There have been um, a fair number of studies which have looked at um, guided injections, whether they are fluoroscopic or ultrasound guided injections for corticosteroid um, versus um, non-guided, and the jury's out. In general, it's felt that improved accuracy does not improve accurate, um, efficacy with, ultra, with ultrasound guided uh, steroid injections. Um, but there may be reasons to do guided injections for non-steroid related things such as um, injection of uh, biologics and so forth. Um, and then it's also technically difficult to so the learning curve I mentioned. Um, maintaining sterile technique um, is more difficult with ultrasound and then, and then cost to the healthcare system if everybody's building uh, ultrasound guided uh, injections.